Let me share this morning also a reading from Swami Kriyananda's autobiography, The New Path. And this is a story of Yoganandaji in 1935 when he visited the school in Ranchi that he had started many years before. It seems that an anniversary banquet was planned at the school. Someone was needed to preside over the function and give it official standing. The name of Gurudas Banerjee, a prominent judge, was recommended. Widely esteemed, this man was, everyone agreed, the best possible choice. Master went, Yoganandaji went, to invite him. What was Master's surprise then when the judge coldly refused to come? He knew all about India's so-called holy men, he said. He was looking at a typical example of them right before him. They were insincere, after people's money, a drain on the community. He had no patience with them, nor time to speak for their worthless causes. Master, though astonished by this reception, was unruffled by it. As he often told us, praise cannot make me any better, nor blame any worse. I am what I am before my conscience and before God. After hearing the judge out, he replied in a friendly tone, well, perhaps you'll reconsider. We should be greatly honored if you would come. When everyone had assembled for the banquet that evening, the affair was about to begin and a car drove up. Out stepped the caustic judge. After the banquet was a report of the school's growth with the number of students who had gone on after graduation to become monks and religious teachers. If the present trend continues, the report read, soon all of India will be covered by with our graduates, spreading the ancient wisdom of our land. Then came the judge's turn to speak. Rising, he said, today is one of the happiest days of my life. This morning, your Swami Yogananda came to visit me. I felt great joy on beholding him but I decided to test him, to see whether he was really as good a man as he looked. I spoke to him as rudely as I knew how, yet he remained so calm and answered me so kindly that I tell you in all sincerity, he passed my test better than I would have imagined possible. And I will tell you something more. Never mind the numbers of your graduates who are becoming monks. India has many monks. But if you can produce even one such man as this, not your school only, not only our city, but our whole country will be glorified. Swamiji wrote elsewhere that he said, I think in some ways that it was Yoganandaji's utter respect for other people that impressed me the most deeply about him. And Guruji himself said, 
Remember, God loves you just as much as he loves me. We are his common children. When Yoganandaji was a child, he had that vision. He closed his eyes and inwardly asked the question, what if we have of closed eyes? This amazing vision of Ishwara that came to him. And we want to cultivate within us that inner light, that same inner light. And then we try to share that light in the world. And what we channel is the same divine light that all the great masters have. Yoganandaji said, you are essentially no different than the masters. It's a difference only of degree. And our job is to concentrate at the center of our own little flame, at the center of our, our being, and focus on that inner light. And this the same essence that is in Yoganandaji, in the Buddha, in Krishna. And our little dia is part of that their great flame. And we are all children of that light. And the story I read is a, is a lesson for each of us to be unaffected by praise or blame, by joy or sorrow, but that, that detachment is not something that should make us cold as human beings, rather just the opposite. It should make us more loving and more respectful of the divine light in each person. There was a, a young man who was very active here, and he had a difficult relationship with his father. And, um, you know, the sort of resentments that um, in one household with more than one generation, a resentment that is very common, almost universal. And this young man one day thought to invite his father to come here to the ashram. But when his father came, it was like almost the young man was embarrassed of his father. And he sort of was a social gathering and he left his father to standing with strangers, and then he went off to mix with his own friends. And what he could have done was to be compassionate to his father, show him around, introduce him to people, start a conversation. And it was like, um, it was this lack of respect. He didn't see God was also in his father. And that divine light was shining through his father. And for him to honor God, he w this was not just a, a social convention or out of duty, but rather seeing the divine. And when we see that divine within us, then we recognize, we respect and honor it when we see it in others. And every day we're presented with little opportunities like that to tune into the divine and to recognize and honor it in others. And this is one of the, the deeper lessons of Diwali. Thank you. For those of you who came to our satsang, our Diwali satsang yesterday, we um, performed the ceremony, the Festival of Light by Swami Kriyananda. We perform it every uh, Diwali and Christmas usually. 
And uh, we, we ended the last song of the, or of the Festival of Light is called Thy Light. And the words are, Thy light within us shining has shown where freedom lies from earthly walls confining to soar in spirit's skies. How oft, like sheep, we've strayed apart, now guided by thy ray, in inner freedom of the heart, our night has turned to day. It's such a beautiful song that Swami Kriyananda wrote. And often, even here in India and all over the world, at the end of his discourses, he would join the choir and sing this song. And he, as all of us also recognize, and he said it's a, it's a beautiful song that helps encapsulate the spiritual path. And I remember the first time I sang that song at an Ananda temple in California, how it um, touched my heart so much that I, I believe I cried. And, um, you know, just felt some of those words and those phrases felt like my life. And, of course, along with the festival, you have the story of the little bird, the little bird that leaves its parents, which is an analogy of us leaving our souls, perhaps leaving God at some point. And, and the parents of the bird say to uh, be fruitful and multiply the gifts that you've been given. And then the little bird says, oh, I think I'm going to keep what is mine for myself and sort of hoard whatever I can get. And I will call that wisdom. And I was thinking in that song how uh, oft like sheep we stray apart. You know, how often do we just kind of think, I'm just going to be in control. I'm going to uh, just take care of myself, and I'm going to do things the way I want it, and I'm not really going to tune in to the divine will. What is the divine asking of me in this moment? And uh, so how oft, like sheep, we've strayed apart. And also like sheep, that he's, that he's mentioning sheep. It's sort of like a flock of sheep that all do the same thing. They'll even all run off the cliff together. You know, that herd mentality of just, if you are all going to do it, I'm going to do it too. It's sort of like being able to stand on your own, even if the rest of society or your family or your friends are all saying, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, for, for instance, when you get onto the spiritual path and you start taking meditation seriously and coming to satsang and your friends are starting to become devotees and you're not going out as much and... I remember when I joined Ananda, <laughs> my brother uh, said to me, he said, you know, it's all fine what you're doing, it's all fine, but do you have to be so extreme? And his extreme was just that I was meditating like an hour in the morning and maybe an hour in the evening and I was starting to attend functions at Ananda and he just thought that was so extreme. And. Um, you know, to others, they don't, can't necessarily understand the spiritual path. So how oft, like sheep, we've strayed apart. And also, sometimes we can start the spiritual path, but have a hard time staying on it. It sort of seems to take a long time to feel that we've made spiritual progress, or we need to persevere or things seem a little difficult at first. You know, wow, where am I going to find this time in my life? How am I going to sort of stay steady on the path? And some people just decide to not keep putting out that effort or that self-discipline. So then we have another cycle of another life and a reincarnation. Um, and, you know, that is sort of one of our duties as devotees is to keep ourselves inspired and keep ourselves on the path with, uh, with self-inspiration, keep ourselves re-inspired. So this song, uh, Thy light within us shining has shown where freedom lies. You know, and we talk so much about the spiritual eye and that light at the spiritual eye. And of course, we're made in God's light. And... Uh, from earthly walls confining, 
So we want to break free from these earthly walls, from this, from this limited form that keeps us bound to illness or to limitation. And we want to be our true, limitless, infinite self. So how off like sheep we've strayed apart, now guided by thy ray. So once we, once we are like good sheep <clears throat> and we follow the shepherd or we follow the guru, you know, I love that picture of master. He actually has a staff and I always re think of him as sort of the shepherd and we're following the shepherd. And, and of course, that's also an illustration of Christ as the shepherd and, and his sheep following him. And then there's Krishna with the flute and, and people follow Krishna and his flute. And so now guided by thy ray, attuning into the divine ray, once we open ourselves to that light that they are shining on us always, uh, we can attune ourselves and become like that light and share that light with others. There's an illustration of fireflies. You know, I, California doesn't have that climate, and I'm not sure. I think we have them in India, but I'm not sure where. It's usually a tropical climate. And, it, you know, you can have just a night of darkness and be sitting outside, and all of a sudden, one little light will light up. And once that one little light of a firefly lights up, suddenly another light lights up, and another light, and suddenly the whole field is filled with light. And that's what we can be. We can be like fireflies and that light we can shine in the darkness and if we shine our light in the darkness we'll also be able to attract others to that light and magnetize um, ourselves to others of light but also attract others that are that are living in limitation and fear and insecurity to that light So the end of that song goes, um, <clears throat> how off like sheep we've strayed apart, now guided by thy ray in inner freedom of the heart, our night has turned to day. So just like Krishna says, you know, what is day to the worldly man is night to the yogi, and what is day to the yogi is night to the worldly man. I loved that the first time I read that sentence, and there, my heart just said, I want to be a yogi. I want all this material up and down world that I've lived for so long to be behind me. And I want to live in the light of a yogi, the day of a yogi. And so let's live those, that, that light of the day of the yogi and awaken thy light. I awaken thy light. I am joyful. I am free. I awaken thy light.